In this video, I will show you how I turned this Porco Rosso seaplane into an oily, dreamy seascape in a complicated process called watching paint dry. This is a painting that I've been wanting to do for many years, but I put it in the back burner due to the fact that I don't own a bright red World War I era fighting seaplane. That has since changed, you see, because I can proudly say that I'm a new owner of a broken dream. On the bright side, I'm starting to look like the pilot though, so that's a win. I chose a 16 by 20 canvas in the vertical orientation, because for this composition, I plan to use the rule of thirds. I placed the focal point at about one third way from the top, so it'll look f***ing amazing. It's a very basic compositional guideline that I use about 33% of the time. In Ireland, they call it the rule of thirds, meaning they would find this painting a stinking pile of dung. I trust them because beauty is in the eyes of the beholder, and the Irish have beholden a lot of turd in history. What I'm using here is called the wipeout technique. It's basically where you lay down a darker shade on the surface, and then pull out the light area using a cloth or a brush. I wanted to call it the pull-out technique, but that term has been trademarked. In 1990, Japan Airlines reached an agreement with Ghibli Studios to bankroll an animation adaptation of The Age of the Flying Boat, a short manga in watercolor written by Hayao Miyazaki himself released the previous year. The animation was planned to be shown exclusively in flight. In producer Toshio Suzuki's words, what better place to see a film about aviation than on a plane? I'm glad James Cameron didn't use this logic when he made the Titanic. Miyazaki, full-time animator and part-time peace lover, introduced anti-fascism themes and mature undertones against the backdrop of the Yugoslavia war, which began in 1991. Thanks for the offer. I'd rather be a pig than a fascist. And this delayed the production time. I can relate to this because I'm also slow at uploading videos due to some war happening. Speaking of anti-fascism, I decided to render the two planes in different ways. For the blue plane flown by Donald Curtis in the background, I took out all its defining details to render it hardly more than just a silhouette. And this gives it an atmospheric and distant feeling. I paint the ocean crests along the plane's silhouette shape. So this just takes a lot of time because the brush placement needs to be quite precise. When it's time to move on to Porco's plane, I give it a beige wash of brown before defining the shadow area some more. I'm describing the shape of the plane only by differentiating the light area versus the shadow area. And for the light area, I'm using cadmium red light, unmixed, straight out of the tube. This makes the plane as vibrantly red as can be. Contrary to popular belief, Miyazaki didn't give Porco's plane a signature color because he had too much red paint to get rid of. That's my problem. A renowned workaholic, when Miyazaki is not drawing storyboards, he's drawing historical parallel. There was indeed a fighter pilot who famously would paint his plane in bright red, in defiance to the pervasive view of common sense of the time, and the time after. A legend of legends, ace of aces, lover of colors and popper of colors. The Red Baron, or as I prefer to call him, Manfred Albrecht Freiherr von Richthofen, was a German fighter pilot who fought during World War I. The man had a long resume of being credited with 80 victories over a span of just one year and a half. After each victory, he commissioned for a silver cup engraved with the date and type of the downed enemy aircraft. He would go on to make 60 such orders until Germany literally ran out of silver and could no longer fuel his indulgence for sacrificial memorabilia. If the Red Baron wrote the When I'm Gone Cup song today, it would have been in heavy metal. <laughs> Get it? Silver? Heavy metal? Anyone? 
It comes now to the time to paint the ocean. I use the brush to pick out the sunlit reflection on the waves, so the sparkles would make the waves look sparkly. This is the same way I would paint teenage vampire heartthrobs. This is what I am. When I was little, I heard a C-pop song named Egg Fried Rice. I promise you, it's not the weirdest thing I've heard being sung about. There's a part in the song where the lyrics go, "Egg fried rice, the easiest and hardest to cook," and some other BS I don't remember. I'm not a chef, so I never figured out if it's true. But I can irresponsibly tell you that painting the ocean is like that. The ocean is by far the easiest thing to paint and for it to look good. Like you kind of have to go out of your way to make it look bad. So to demonstrate, here I actually did go out of my way and it looks really bad. The sense of distance is distorted from top to bottom, and it looks like a boring copy and paste above and below the plane. And that's my fault. I should have planed more instead of winging it. <laughs> I'm on the road today. I took the trouble of wiping it off and redoing that section. I guess what I'm saying is, you'd better think twice when I offer you egg fried rice. The tail of Porco's plane is painted the tricolors of the Italian flag, with a single letter making up the license plate. R, as we all know, stands for Romeo. That won't do because my name is not Romeo, so I changed it to a Z. It's like doing graffiti. Only no one's here to stop me. I live for this kind of mischievous thrill. Well, this is the finished painting. I'm also going to release a long, unedited version of this painting in process, without commentary. If you find watching and listening paint dry therapeutic, or for some inexplicable reason can't stand the sound of my voice, keep an eye out for it in the next few days. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.